How important is it for UNO to get off a hot start because they come in losers of three or four, first time they've really faced that adversity all year? I think it's important for every team to come in uh, and, and get off to a good start. You don't want to play from behind. It's just too hard come tournament time. You can't depend on it. Here's Derek St. Hilaire as UNO has the ball first and an early charge. The 7 1 Brendan Medley Bacon draws the foul on the graduate St. Hilaire, who coming in 13th in the nation and scoring 21 a game. Now, David, I mentioned this last night. Now it's worth mentioning again. That's what Macon's got to do. He's got to just be there and he doesn't have to block every shot. What did he do there? He took a charge. That's a great play on the other team's leading scorer. That he's Keep an eye on that. That could be a factor if they can draw some more fouls. Kellen Taylor did score 22 for McNeese yesterday, but they got scoring from nine players. Awfully good depth on this Cowboy roster. Including the name of the basketball, Zach Scott, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. There's six on the shot clock. Miles Lewis works on St. Hilaire, finds Jonathan Massey, who has to hurry for three. Medley Bacon got the rebound, but pushed off. And the foul on the junior. That's a pretty good defense. That was a tough shot, a degree of difficulty shot. You know, I like that. I like that the defensive possession. Both teams on their opening defensive possession. You know, you you look at a team early and you can measure how they're playing defensively, not just if the ball's going to pass, but what kind of pressure are they putting on. They break the press here. If you're UNO, what are you looking for the most offensively? Well, that'll help. A nice pass. And <laughs> just barely Simeon Kirkland finishes. Well, I like that, too. I mean, going to the basket, you you got to know that UNO is going to go to the basket. They're not going to settle for a bunch of shots. They get to the free throw line. That's what they've done all year long. So they're not afraid. They lead the conference. They're going to try to get a lot of twos. Zach Scott for three. Coming in 67 threes on the year. Quick outlet, but off the hand of Saki, the turnover by Tyson Jackson, and McNeese gets it back. Uh, they had a chance. You can see how, how explosive UNO is if they can get out in transition. That was almost a breakaway. But it's the defensive pressure. Both teams getting their hands on the ball. Nothing's going to come easy. These teams like to get out. They like to defend. When McNeese hasn't played well offensively. It's simply because they turned the ball over. They were minus 40 in their 14 regular season conference games. Kellen Taylor unable to finish the reverse. Here comes Daniel Saki, the junior from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. To the rim, and that won't count. It looked pretty, but it hit the shot clock. But it will be two free throws. David, I'm from UNO. That, I want that to count. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from McNeese. I got to point to the top of the backboard. The score clock, anything that can take that basket away. You, know, you can see it again. That was a high off the glass. And yes. Uh, the right call by the officials. I hate yeah. to admit it all the time. But. Nope. This is basketball, not Plinko. So, Saki, <laughs> yeah. two free throws. Just the six men at Tobin to earn a scholarship in Division One basketball. I have a lot of family who live in Winnipeg. The yeah. temperature, by the way, earlier today up in beautiful, friendly Manitoba, one. And, and that's uh, Fahrenheit, by the well, way, not why, Celsius. David, that's why I was able to recruit a ton of kids to Michigan from <laughs> Canada because it was even warmer in Michigan. Cold as it was, it wasn't as cold as Canada, so I, I made a living up in Canada. Yeah, balmy 30 uh, degrees yeah. in the afternoon in January in Michigan, huh? Right. Early 3 nothing lead for the 3 seed. Massey for three. Yes, the Southland Conference Freshman of the Year. Oh, he's a good-looking freshman. He's just ice water from there. Really knocks down shots. Compete, competes. Talk about how UNO won't shoot a lot of threes. They shoot the fewest threes in the nation. They do make a living at going to the free throw line. They are best in the nation in free throw rate. It's the ratio of free throw to field goal attempts. Troy Green lost the basketball. Massey finds Zach Scott. To the rim and the finish. Well, that's that's something that shouldn't happen, David. You shouldn't, you know, if you're not shooting a lot of threes and you're trying to get to the basket, you got to come back and get back in transition. But it's up to UNO to, again, just be aggressive, stay aggressive, and get to the basket if they can. I, there's still a load, and and you know this is old-fashioned basketball, it's smash mouth basketball. It's kind of reminiscent of what the Big Ten was like for years. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with this kind of basketball. Today's game is predicated on the three and driving angles. But, you know, uh, if you have guys that can score at the rim, get it there. Uh, you know, you always start to want to start to play inside out. Makes the game a lot easier. Scott just picked up his first foul for the Cowboys. Tend to shoot for Green. Jackson straight away. Yes. Well, I like that. And why is that an open shot? Because they're respecting 
UNO's ability to get to the rim. So you take what the defense gives you. Now it's up to UNO to get some stops, try to slow down this McNeese te team that's playing pretty well, feeling good about themselves. Massey, five in the early going. Yeah, speaking of feeling good about it himself, David, he, he's feeling no, no heat. This happened yesterday. McNeese got off to a great start. Kirkland can't get the roll. UNO's defense, big reason why they come and lose is a three of four. In those losses, they've allowed 84, 87, and 92 points. Mark Schlesinger telling us we have to keep our opponents under 75. Oh, and he's right about that. They're, they're better than that. Medley Bacon, short. Lewis, the follow, and a four-point lead for McNeese. Well, it's interesting to see McNeese take it to UNO. They're getting to the basket, and, and you know, that's something UNO doesn't usually allow, but you mentioned lately they've struggled a little bit on the defensive end. They've allowed some points. Saki, back to Kirkland. Nice finish. That's really picture-perfect basketball. That's just a give-and-go. Good spacing, good timing. Kirkland had a double level against McNeese January 6th. Junior with four. Massey feeling it again. Averaging five points a game coming in, but with seven already. Well, you just said it, David. That's called feeling it. And, and when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. That was just a step back, off balance shot, and no problem. Green muscles up. Well short. Good defense by Lewis. Kellen Taylor lost the basketball. Losses allowing an average of 85 points. When they won it all here in 2017, uh, they weren't giving up uh, scores in the 80s. No, and that's what they have to do, David, get back to the defense. Massey open, misses the three this time. A five of 10 start from the floor for McNeese. UNO three of five, but Cowboys are doubling them up in field goal attempts early on. Deontay Bell right off the bench. He draws the foul. Well, I like the ability, again, you've got a UNL team that has size. They're not afraid to take you to the basket. They can get to the free throw line. You know, they're one of the leaders in the country and, and, and made. Uh, you know, they, they get out there, and, and if they can get to the free throw line, that's going to be important. Number one in the nation in free throw rate, but usually that's because of St. Hilaire and Green. Bell just 44% from the line before those two misses. McNeese deep, they have Christian Shoemate coming off the bench, their leading scorer. Harwin Francois, good three-point shooter in as well, but it's Jonathan Massey, the story so far, nine already. Well, he's feeling it, and once your player's in the rhythm, it's hard to get him out of that rhythm. It really is. Saki, nice speed. Bell finishes. Well, that's Daniel Saki. What a what a great penetration. You know, guy that gets about three assists a game, and he's small, but he's explosive to the basket. That's a great look. Great finish. Derek St. Hilaire's on the bench for UNO, trailing by four in the early going. Shoemate's first drive, Bell cuts him off, and then it was Kirkland poking the ball away. Green drives, beautiful finish and one. How about the Euro step in the middle of that drive? David, I did not see any opening. I, how he got an opening in there, there was three defenders. Here's one, here's two, there's a white a three. You know, that's almost like a football play. That's, that's just an amazing surge to the basket, but great, as you mentioned, great footwork, the Euro step. Well, if you don't know what the Euro step is, you better you better figure out how to use it because that created that basket and a chance for a three-point attempt. And he gets Cowboys hot as shooter and Massey to the bench with his second foul. Green cuts the deficit to one. Five in a row for UNO. Sam Hiller back on the floor. Trey English has had a couple of great games lately, two best in his career, finding Medley Bacon, who travels. Oh, and then Deontay Bell goes right into the face of Medley Bacon and taunts him. That's an easy technical foul call. Kirby Sitton giving the tee to Bell after Medley Bacon was called for the travel. Well, that was too obvious. You know, if you're going to 
talk, get your point across, you know, say, you know, block, block the shot, cause the travel, a little pat on the back maybe, but the theatrics and the uh, extra dialogue, that's in front of the official. That was a long, I mean, he's going to get a good job, acting job out of that one maybe, but, but I'll tell you what, David, that's, that's not what you want because really momentum was starting to shift in the privateer's direction, and that kind of took a little bit of sting there out of what was happening for the privateers. So it's two free throws for Trey English, the freshman, had 12 last night at the win over Northwestern State. 27 Saturday, easily a career high in the four overtime loss for McNeese to HBU. What was amazing about that game, John Aiken telling us when he went into the locker room, everyone stood up and gave each other an ovation for their effort. They had a lead with a second left in the first three overtime, still didn't win, and yet they were all proud of their performance instead of being hurt. And, and as they should have been, David, sometimes the end result, the one of the loss, doesn't define who you are, and I really, really could appreciate that. Nice feed inside, but Jackson doubled. Able to find Kamani Dowdy, strong drive and a foul. That's on Medley Bacon, that's his second. Now when UNO makes their mind up to go to the rim, they get to the rim. They're, they don't mind. They'll take on all comers. I, I like that, David. I think it's it's a statement that saying we're willing to take some hits, but we're going to get to the line. We're going to we're going to take it to you. You're going to have to take charges like they did the open the game, or block a shot, or get out of the way because we're here. We come. So the seven one medley bacon does pick up a second, and he goes to the bench. And, and David, that's a good example. Uh, when you play against a seven footer, you know, don't shy away from contact. That's part of the game plan. That's really intelligent because you know, a lot of times shot blockers want to block shots and they're susceptible. They're prone and, and you can get them out of the game. They, you, you don't want to have to go up against a seven footer uh, for the entirety. You want to try to get a little bit easier look to the basket. So that's the key, key to get them out of the game. Already six McNeese fouls and UNO best in the nation in drawing fouls and go into the line. They withstood the early McNeese push and we're tied. Back to our feed English. Out to Shoemate for three. The Cowboys get another chance. Well, you had two privateers fighting for the ball, but give me two guys fighting for the ball and losing it out of bounds and nobody going after it. That, that's, that's okay. Francois for three. Here comes St. Hilaire, so far off the board, averaging 21 a game. Keeps his drive. Second chance coming, and his first two. I like the way he stayed with that. That was good defense by McNeese, but it was St. Hilaire that just stayed with the basketball and was able to finish it up, foul up. UNO's first lead, foul. And it will be Kellen Taylor to the line. Well, Kellen Taylor's not afraid, David, to take the ball to basket, former football player, uh, you know, but he suddenly doesn't look that big out there. You know, he's, <laughs> he suddenly looks like a regular-sized basketball player. He's not that big compared to the privateers. I always thought of him as being a bigger, more stronger, athletic guy, but he looks very average size here, but he's a competitor. Uh, he's, he's, he's fearless, and he really was the player of the game for McNeese in their win. At 22 last night, at 6-6, six, six played receiver at Duquesne in the oh, FCS and was all-conference in their team captain. Now, great, great player and had a uh, pleasure covering him for Duquesne when he played there, played basketball. St. Hilaire tripled. He got the ball tipped away. He gets another dribble and fades away. Yes. Yeah, that's why if you don't knock it out of his hands, you give him another opportunity. Uh, John Hicken wanted to travel, wanted to double dribble, he'll take anything. But you give St. Hilaire an extra second with the ball, he'll burn you. English to answer. He connects the freshman's first field goal. But I like what he's done, too. He's tough. Trey English can, can knock it down. Wild shot, St. Hilaire short this time. Here comes English. For the lead from the corner, Colin Warren misfires. Francois, the swat, Dowdy. Here they call this Merrill Madness. We've seen wild finishes and a uh, pretty good start to this one. UNO up on McNeese, 18-17. With Ben Braun, I'm David Salzman. Already UNO in the bonus with 11.20 to go. 
in this first half of play. They've gone 11 straight possessions, Ben, you know, without a turnover after committing four in the early game. Well, that's because I told Mark Schlesinger he can't turn it over. I just <laughs> stopped at our table to say hello. I said, Coach, don't give the ball to the other team. He said, what can I do? I said, don't turn it over. And, like, he didn't already know that. He, the, the coaches know their teams better than anybody else, David. He knows how important turnovers are. He was still so positive when we spoke to him yesterday. Here's a team that had the conference lead until the final day and said, look, I'm proud of this group. We played very well. Just got to find that gear again here in Katy on the conference's biggest stage. Kellen Taylor draws the foul, and he'll go to the line. Well, David, here's the thing about these games. You know, teams are going to make runs. Nothing's just going to be easy. No team's going to walk through this. I don't care who you are. So you got to be prepared for other teams' runs. you got to be prepared for some of your guys getting maybe in foul trouble, uh, playing through some fatigue. This is If you want to be a champion, you want to get to the NCAA, you're going to have to play through some adversity. I don't care who you are and where you're seated. You're going to have to bring it. Mm -hmm. I think coming in, really, Nichols obviously is the hottest team in the league, and they've won 10 of 11, but Southeastern Louisiana's beaten them three times. UNO had the conference lead until the final day. Corpus is playing their best basketball, and here's the McNeese team maybe playing their best basketball of the season coming in. It's been as much a toss-up, I think, in who might win this as we've seen in some time. Now, and you know, we're sitting right next to the uh, Nichols staff. They're here. Dr. Austin Clanch a minute ago and uh, talked to the coaching staff Southeastern before that, and, and you know, they're scouting this game, but they, they know how important it is to play well in this tournament. There again, there's no there's no do-overs. There's no, well, let's let's come back out tomorrow, we'll be better. No. You you play today and you know mistakes can cost you. Uh, mental mistakes can cost you, but you know, you the, the coaching staff here knows that it doesn't matter where you received or what you did. You gotta come here and perform. There's Austin Clanch, his colonels. Rough start to conference play. They've righted the ship. You and a really the opposite started nine and one before losing three of their last. Four. Well, what you, what can you say? They play some people though, and, and yeah. so I, I think that helps your team. You know, as a coach, sometimes you wanted to get wins. I, I understand that, but if you don't test your team, you don't really have a realistic view of who you are. UNO's already 8 of 11 from the line. We played just over nine minutes. That's a huge strength of their team all season long. Getting to the strike. Colin Warren. He'll be called for the travel. Actually, he'll be called for being out of bounds with the basketball. Take, Just take slipped. Pick. Yeah, take your pick. It could be a travel. could be out of bounds with the ball. Either way, the privateer is playing some pretty good defense right there. I, I thought they switched off. The help is tremendous. They're forcing the ball to the baseline. And what do you do when you get to the baseline? You get another defender, and guess what? You get another defender in the baseline. You go into a triple team. A lot of people don't understand that. That's why teams force to the baseline. Used to be an old school basketball. You force to the middle where your help was. Not anymore. It's to the baseline. There's Derek St. Hilaire. Ja Myers on the floor for the first time. They don't shoot the three much. Mentioned last in the nation in three-point shots. If they get one up, it's usually St. Hilaire. He finds Simeon Kirkland this time. Meyer saves the pass. Right back to Kirkland and the layup. How about the patience of the privateers? They were getting defended awfully well by McNeese, and they just managed to beat the clock. But that, that was just pinpoint passing and patience. Biggest lead at five for the three seed. For three, Scott, yes. His first of the night, 68th of the season, easily leading the Cowboys. That's what he does. Troy Green drives. Too long. Warren took his eye off the ball, but saved in the corner. Three by Scott would have given them the lead. Here comes Green. With three Cowboys around him, he finds St. Hilaire, and UNO has numbers. Bump will mean more free throws. Warren picks up his first. Oh, the pace picking up here, David. How about that scrum in front of the scorer's table? Three or four guys going on the floor and just, just muscling the ball out. I don't know how they came away with the basketball. All kinds of Cowboys hands were on the ball, but it was the privateers who managed to wrestle the ball free and come back and get an opportunity to get free throws at the other end. Derek San Hilaire is about to attempt his 156th free throw attempt of the season. And yet that's behind Troy Green for the team lead. It's coming in 83%. Hey, David, you know how hard that is to play against when you know your opposing backcourt duo 
can get to the rim. They can knock down their free throws. They can draw fouls. It puts so much pressure on your defense, and they've got some big guys in there, too, that they can, if you make an effort to, to step off and, and double team or help, you can get guys to the basket to drop off. That's why they're shooting 60-plus percent in this game. They've got some guys shooting percentages now. Pause in the action as blood just above the right elbow of Kellen Taylor, so you see they'll tape it up. He's, I mean, uh, he played football conference receiver. You I think mean, he not, hasn't had tape before? Yeah, that's I mean, nothing. <laughs> no, he's, he's a tough young man. And uh, boy, it was, it was a joy to interview him last night, talk about his leadership and his growth as a player. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's matured and he's really given his team something besides his effort and his energy. He's actually become a leader, which, you know, kids grow. And, uh, it's nice to see growth. Six for St. Hilaire. UNO up for the two seed Southeastern Louisiana. At least the winner of this one in our second semifinal tomorrow. Taylor fires, connects. Well, he's added that to his game. He was not always been a great shooter, but he's really added that, that, that shot. He's very comfortable with it now. I wouldn't say three-point shooting's his forte, but he can pull up and hit that 15-footer, no problem. Scott tips the pass out of bounds. And look at the enthusiasm on the McNeese bench. They're, they're just looking for anything they can to just rally each other. And, and John Aiken's got his team fired up. Look, you can see he wants his team to keep that pressure up and continue to talk and defend and be on a string, be together. Green spins, hangs in the lane, but well short. Got the ball back, yet call for the walk. Well, it's because he went up for the shot and didn't draw iron and he got his own rebound and a lot of officials missed that call. Uh, that was a good call by the officials. No argument from the privateers at all, except Mark. <laughs> He's going to well, make his case. He'll, he'll back up his player. <laughs> yeah, as he should. Cowboys can take the lead with the three. Taylor not sure. Now fires. And they dared him to shoot the three, David. That's oh. again what we were talking about. He's just 26% from beyond the arc coming in. He didn't want to take that. Kirkland. Charging ball. Great After missing the three, Taylor draws great, the foul. Yeah, great, great defensive play. But, you know, you, you joke around. I used to joke around with players, and you say, you know, why you keep shooting that three? And the player would inevitably say, well, I was open. And you used to have to say, well, there's a reason why you're open, because <laughs> you're shooting 20% from there. And if you if your player has a good-natured heart, you'll, you'll understand that. Uh, I, I remember I had to do that a number of times with some players. I said, you could lead our team in assists, but you're not going to lead our team in shooting. Boy, all conference receiver at Duquesne, leader of this McNeese team. Yeah, I love it. Wiping off his sweat off the floor. Well, as he should. You know, he caused it. I mean, you know, it's only <laughs> fitting that he wipes up his own sweat. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's responsible. Yeah, John Aiken calls him the heart and soul of the whole team. Plans to play overseas, but afterwards he wants to coach. And he's been Christian Shoemate's biggest mentor. We haven't seen much of Shoemate today. Leading scorer for the Cowboys coming in. Big reason why McNeese's season's still going. Now, he was huge last night. Scott draws the foul on Green. Green's first, and now McNeese is in the bonus. These teams are playing each other aggressively, David. If you, if you watch, nothing's easy. I mean, these teams are trying to create advantages to the basket. Uh, there's probably a few push-offs going on that aren't called. There's a little bit of hand-checking that's going on. Officials can't call everything. You used to tell that to my team, you know, play aggressively. They can't get everything. You know, you box out in the first play of the game. Everybody box out as hard as you can. They can only call one foul. So, you know, players need to understand that if you're the aggressive team, good things happen. And there's a fine line between being over aggressive and, you know, and, and not being sportsmanlike. But you, you, you cannot play the game soft. You, you've got to play with contact, absorbing it, and you've got to play giving it because uh, the game's too easy if you can play free and easy. Zach Scott, 91% from the line, three threes last night, and McNeese's first conference tournament win in seven years. This is their 32nd appearance, a conference record. They haven't won this tournament, though, since 2002. Well, you think UNO's playing well, and they're kind of creating a lead here, but if you look up, David, it's tie ball game, so McNeese hanging tough, playing good basketball. Myers rattles it in to give his team the lead. Well-designed play. That was a curl 
That was a baseline screen and a down screen, little flex action, wide open in the paint. Doesn't have to be a three, a nice 12, 10, 12 footer. Fourth meeting this season between these two teams. Nice speed, and Lewis fires, ties it up. That's a good look. Great find. That was Zach Scott with the find to Lewis, the VMI transfer. Green steps back. Scott on the run. Challenges for privateers and off the mark. Uh, you know, a lot of buzz here. It's just great to be back in this building. We mentioned the last year here, and, you know, exciting. It's, it had some great memories. Uh, it's just a great place to host a tournament. But I know that in, in the future looks bright, too, hosting in, in Lake Charles. That should be a lot of fun and uh, a great, great venue ahead. At the brand-new Legacy Center, which reopened in mid-January after being damaged by two hurricanes, Delta and Laura. It was Great day and time for the Cowboys to get that facility back open, and they won in a buzzer beating three their first game back. They'll host the tournament the next four years after this one. Jonathan Massey's pass tipped in a turnover. Sam Hilaire, Rodney Carson to the rim. Massey the swap. Then got pushed down a foul. The freshman of the year in the league had nine early points, then went to the bench in foul trouble, and as he comes right back on, the impact here. Well, David, I don't know. You know, that was just a great break. I thought two on one, back to Hilaire, back for the shot, and, you know, maybe if he gathered it, but he tried to get it up, exposed the ball a little bit. That was just enough to, to create the block and then draw the foul. Great individual play defensively. That would have been a basket and a little bit of a lead for New Orleans as it stands now a chance to tie it up this is the front end but Taylor the rebound the foul was on Myers now Francois for the lead Massey there for the board put back Bell was there Massey recovers offensive foul they'll get shoemate for pushing away Bell going for the pass well that's unfortunate because McNeese really I thought was hustling, was really on this possession, David, outworking the privateers on the offensive glass. Unfortunate to get the offensive push off, takes New Orleans off the hook a little bit, see if New Orleans can capitalize now and get, come back and get a chance to extend the lead. Cowboys won last night, played four overtimes on Saturday. Fatigue possibly a concern later on? Well, it could be, uh, you know, but I think it's just the second game. I don't worry about the second game, third or fourth game, yes. Green lost it. And a whistle. You know, I think fatigue is a, is a factor uh, down the stretch of any game, even a single game, when you're playing a lot of minutes. But I, I think that, you know, you can, you can get your adrenaline going if the second game is going to advance you. You start getting into a third, and even if you're fortunate, a fourth game, that takes a lot of toll. You just don't simulate that during the season at any point. Well, no team since this format began in 2013 where top two teams got double buys, three and four get single buys. No teams won four and four days in the 10 years we've had and, the format. And that's why you play the regular season to try to earn those seeds. You know, you want to be in a position to get a double buy and rest your legs. I talked to Austin Crunch and I talked to David Kiefer, as you and I did, and, you know, they're pretty happy to have their team <laughs> resting right now and, and, you know, getting fresh. You know, you can get a little stale, but I think you want fresh legs. UNO 14 of 17 from the line. Back to her feed to Warren. Massey chases down the rebound. Yeah, you can't tip defensive rebounds, David. You gotta put two hands in the ball and grab. You tip offensive rebounds, not defensive rebounds. The conference's biggest stage, Massey, the freshman feeling it, although he loses the ball here. Rodney Carson Jr., the flush. Yeah, that's a good series for UNO, the rest of this. And again, turnovers. You know, you don't mind a turnover, but you don't mind a turnover that leads to a basket. Biggest lead for the privateers at six. Taylor spins, hangs, got it back. Now, <laughs> UNO wanted to travel, but that ball must have been tipped on the way up initially, and then Taylor draws the foul on Kirkland. David, how hard is it to keep Kellen Taylor off the glass? He's springy, he's bouncy, he's strong. It's amazing, but let's look at the defensive possession. There's the pick, pick of the pocket, 
And here's the two with some oomph. Going back to what we talked about a minute ago and how much energy will McNeese have here for overtime Saturday and then their win last night. But they have good depth. They go 10 deep. Kellen Taylor's been pacing the team the last few weeks. But Christian Shoemate still scoreless. Harwin Francois scoreless. Brendan well, Medley Bacon scoreless. So there's potential here for the Cowboys. No, Cowboys. there is. But fortunately, they didn't come a long distance to come here to play. It, it, it wasn't a, a long trip. So it's it, they'll, they'll be OK. I, I think that uh, you know UNO will be the pressure of the two teams. But you don't have time to worry about fatigue. If you let fatigue bother you and you get in your head, David, it can hurt you. You don't even want to entertain the thought. Here's Green, trying to get by Warren. What a strong move by the senior. David, that's something out of nothing. I saw no opening there. I don't think you saw an opening. And I don't think his defender saw an opening, but it didn't make any difference. Trey Green saw an opening. Lead up to seven. Green quietly has nine. English drives. Oh, got hit down to the ground, I believe, around the neck. And Dowdy picks up his second. This looks all right, but took a lick. Uh, these are some tough kids, David. I, I really, you can really admire the aggressiveness of these two teams. They play aggressively. They can dish it out, but they can take it. And, you know, you always, I always felt that if a team got hit and kind of, you know, cowered a little bit or just took a step back, you knew you had them. Mm -hmm. uh, these teams just dust themselves off, get to the line, and kind of flinch a little bit and say, uh, you know, that's your best shot. <laughs> so you got to have that mentality. It's kind of a little bit of a fighter's mentality. You can't let your opponent know that you're tired, fatigued, or that you've been hurt. Nice defeated UNO here at the Southland tip-off in double overtime January 6th. Privateers won the two meetings that counted towards the conference standings by 6 and 13. Here's Troy Green again, all the way to the rim. Oh, the underhand scoop. He remains hot. David, again, I don't see the opening but I don't have to guard him, <laughs> and I'm not Troy Green, but he gets to the basket and just makes those shots look easy with his finish. It's just amazing how, he's, how he gets there. 6'3", 215, so strong, knocks that ball out of... It's difficult to do in any game, Ben. Now, David, you're, you're bringing up a great point, but I, I'm, I'm with Coach Schles, and, you know, you can get to the foul line. You're creating a lot of things that are really hidden in the box score. Zach Scott for three falls, and it's a four-point game. And right now, UNO's 14 of 17 from the line. McNeese, 9 of 13. So that stat is going UNO's way so far. Well, guess what else it does? It gets the other team's best players out of the game yeah. and, and gets you in the bonus, too. Carson almost hanging in the air, made the first shot, and there he is for the recovery. David, there was, almost, there was no almost. He, he was hanging in the air, and he finishes. So... Yeah, that's the second time he's done that. I, I really am impressed with your ability to go and, and, and just stay with your shot, pursuit of the basketball. Daniel Saki hounding English, who resets to Lewis. Ten on the shot clock. Lewis drives, spins, took an extra step. McNeese, after being an assistant under Heath Troyer, who's now the athletics director. I think really is getting this program going on solid footing. You lose a four overtime game and your team just still cheers for each other in the locker room afterwards. Oh, you know you got the culture positive. Here's the two three zone. David, here's the change. 10 on the shot clock. Green needs help. Meyer spins. Carson skies for the board. Shot clock did not reset. St. Hilaire sees it from 35. Medley Bacon there. So John, uh, so David, pretty good timeout by John Aikens on that possession. The 2-3 hurt New Orleans. English drives, two free throws. You know, think about that for a second. You don't call timeout, you, your team gets scored on because you don't like what's happening defensively. Now you put yourself in a, in a, in a hole. Conversely now, you get the stop with your change of defense. You come down, get a chance to get to the free throw line and, and cut this lead to possibly a, a, a four point lead. What a luxury to have Trey English really get going. <laughs> Over 30% of his points for the season came in the last two games coming in. And we mentioned the 27 and the four overtime loss to HBU 
on Saturday. He's continued a solid play today for a team that already has solid depth. Now they, he's done a great job. Just a freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. Mostly transfers on this team. English makes one of two. A team that's come together late. Against the zone, Saki shuffled his feet, turnover. So the zone's now caused a shot clock violation and a turnover and a travel. So good move by Coach Aiken. You know, again, you, he knows his team. And I think you put your team in a position to be successful. Lob, Medley Bacon, the layup. What a nice feed from up top in Taylor. And what a nice turnaround, David. They've, they've turned around and cut this to three. And continue to sit in the zone. Looks like a box and one on Hilaire. For three, Saki. That's bounced out back to UNO. Now they're playing a box and one, David. Saki again. He's just 15, or rather 30% from beyond the arc. The misfires on two. And now McNeese can tie with the three. They were down seven not long ago. English. Medley Bacon fires. Yeah, keep your eye on this end of the floor. They've been going box and one, which means they're zone and one. They're denying question. The, the uh, you know, and I can kid you because I've known you a long time, but, and you have asked me that question before, by the way. Uh, you can use him as a screener and you can decide to go inside. Let's see what they do. Green, now Bell. Medley Bacon, the strong rebound. Last shot for the McNeese Cowboys, and it looks as though they can draw this thing pretty much even if they can score with the last possession. Shot clock, game clock, virtually identical. Eight on the shot clock. And look at a foul on Dowdy. I think UNO wanted a moving screen on and, Medley Bacon. And David, I, I, I think Mark Schlesinger might have a point here, and I, I don't usually take up for coaches or sides with the officials, but I, I think there was some movement. Dowdy. Yeah, can't review it. Trey English for two. That looked like there might have been some moving screen is what I think Coach Mark Schlesinger was asking for. Sure was a lot of movement. Didn't seem like the, the screener got set. So you've got eight seconds left. Plenty of time for UNO to come down and build on their lead. Rebound tip twice. Taylor with it. Four seconds. And Taylor stepped on the baseline. Oh, McNeese had a chance to perhaps take the lead with the three going into the break. Instead, UNO three seconds to do something. Not here. much time, but you got to try to get it in Hilaire's hand and race it down the floor. Let's see what happens. Sam Hilaire, the catch, has to hurry, runs it up. Almost went in. This game. Derek San Hilaire limped into the locker room at halftime. Looks fine as we begin half number two. Any adjustments the Cowboys have to make offensively besides not turning the ball? Well, over? Troy Green, they've got to, you know, try to do something with Troy Green. They've done a really good job on St. Hilaire. It's Troy Green that's been a problem for them. Second half underway. Cowboys with the basketball. Here's the 7-1 Brendan Medley Bacon. Two points in the first half. Now with 10 to shoot, Massey. Jonathan Massey, the freshman of the year in the conference. Five to shoot. Miles Lewis has to hurry. Runs it up. Swat by Kirkland. Shot clock violation. Well, that's a great possession. You know, you asked me what McNeese has to do. I can tell you that's what New Orleans has to do. They have to continue to play defense like that because that's really a, that's a statement stop to start the half. That's really digging in and getting it done. We'll repeat again what UNO head coach Mark Schlesinger told us. He says, we got to keep the opponent under 75. McNeese uh, right up at base at halftime with a good first defensive possession for the Privateers. Saki down the baseline. Throws it away. Uh, you know, that's interesting when you have a baseline uh, 
drive, you need what's called a baseline drift, and that means your your teammate has to be in the dead corner, and that's not that's that's just standard. That's the defense the, the defense collapses to the middle, and the openings, David, are in the corner. And I don't think the privateers got to their proper spacing on that last one. Taylor finds Miles Lewis in the foul, and a chance for the Cowboys to tie. Kellen Taylor has been the best player for the Cowboys the last three weeks. Double figures his last five, but that's not all he does. No, he's really active. And, you know, I think McNeese is an active team. They're playing pretty well. They, they're feeling good about themselves. Uh, this is why it's an interesting matchup. But, you know, they've gotten to the line, and, and you can't overstate it because it starts getting in your head a little bit, but they just have to find a way to convert. You do the job, you take the contact, get to the line, but you don't come away with anything to show for it. There's 0 for 2 as a, as a point and example. So now McNeese under 60% from the line, UNO 82%. Kirkland spins on Medley Bacon. That's a second straight turnover. Medley Bacon is forced. Well, and, and UNO saying that they got forced out, but there's no such thing as a force out anymore. Used to be a force out call, now it's Either you got fouled or you didn't. And so uh, I think they thought there was some contact there, and it might have been. But their officials doing a good job letting both teams play through some contact. For the lead, Scott, yes! First lead for the Cowboys in some time. Troy Green unable to answer. Privateers will get a second chance. David, if you're going to let somebody loose for the Cowboys, it better not be Zach Scott. I mean, he's just really nailing some shots. How about this? flying out of out of nowhere feeling it and his teammates applauding him he's been key in the cowboys five southland conference wins including the one last night 17 and a half in those victories and he is up to 13 today last mcneese lead was 13 12 before now well new orleans gonna have to make some adjustments i'm not sure if you can double necessarily but you're gonna have to try to get it out of his hands and force a drive and then just get there on the dribble because he's really, really hurt the privateers. Derek San Hilaire just six in the first half. And UNO's win in Lake Charles January 30th, very similar than a hot second half. And just like in the first half, when St. Hilaire's been cold, Troy Green's provided a spark, and there he is with 13 giving his team the lead. I like the play call, great design play for Green to curl off a screen into the lane. Just excellent knowledge of your personnel. Double on Scott, finds Taylor. Medley Bacon unable to answer. Here comes Green. St. Hilaire left open for three. In and out. Tyson Jackson the board. Green in traffic, eight to shoot. Saki for three. Privateers had two open looks. They did, and, and they really had a chance to convert. Taylor drives, lays it in. McNeese back in front. McNeese keeping the pressure on UNO all game. That's a kick. Had a couple to the shot clock back to 20. Well, Mac McNeese generally, you know, they like to turn their opponents over, and New Orleans got to take care. They have to take care of the basketball. They, they really don't want to get in the turnover game here and give McNeese some momentum. San Hilaire trying to get it going. Fades away. Yes. Well, that's a tough shot, but that's taking what the defense gives you. They, they let you drive baseline and you pull up. You know, that's just a short, it's not a three-point shot, but it's just a pull up, and that's that's what St. Hilaire can do. That's his bread and butter. Back and forth we go so far this half. That's a walk. Just two lead changes in the first half. We've had three already in the first three, 21 of half number two. Yeah, there's an extra step in there. Uh, good call by the officials. They're, they don't, you know, they haven't blown their whistle much. They're letting these teams play, but you gotta call the obvious. St. Hilaire had six at the half, January 30th in Lake Charles, but finished with 23. He had 27 in the UNO win at home against McNeese in February. See if he'll get going here. Kamani Dowdy right now who forces it. That's it. And the charge. Nowhere to go, David. We talked about the uh, 
double team on the baseline with the baseline. <laughs> you know, you there's, there's you run out of real estate there. There's not a lot of room to maneuver. So you force baseline, and what happens? Either you step out of bounds or you run into a defender and you charge. That was Dowdy's fourth. Yeah, that's that's significant because now he's going to have to sit for a good stretch. That takes away their depth. So St. Hilaire easily their best three-point shooter with 55 threes, and, and Dowdy's second with 20. They don't shoot a lot of threes already, but now Dowdy's going to be on the bench for a long time. Trey English behind the back. Carson reaches in. You see how quick these players are. You know, it's tough to keep players. It's the hardest thing in basketball I've always felt is just to guard one-on-one -on -one with no help. It's just impossible. The offense knows where they're going, and they can usually get there. Usually you need another defender to step in and at least give you a man, a half a man, just a, a bluff, a little, little bit of a help and recover. Tough. You wondered, uh, why would God put me in a place to be the head coach at McNeese? He's from Maine. And then when he saw the trash created by the hurricane's damage, he said it's a reminder of what the community is, is still overcoming today, two years later. And he said, also, this place fits my life story, and I can resurrect this McNeese program through unthinkable circumstances like I've done with my life. David, I think it's a great story, but more important than the story, you know, John Aiken is willing to share that. A lot of people are very, you know, closed-minded about it. They're either ashamed or they're, they're, they're very private. But he said, look, if I can help somebody else and somebody knows my story, you know, I want to give back. And so he shares his story. And why shouldn't you? I think he's proud of where he's gotten to. And he's a, he's a role model now. And he's got ability to help people. And New Orleans has gone through, of course, their share of hurricanes. Mark Schlesinger says people just don't understand how long it takes to overcome those. But John Aiken lived in a trailer in his driveway uh, for over a year after the hurricanes hit in 2020, and he still has neighbors living in FEMA trailers. Well, that tells you what you need to know. And, and you know, it's, it is a fascinating story. It's a sad story that has at least a, a, pretty good, a pretty good ending to this now. I mean, the fact that he is now in a position to help others, that's that's the key part. It's, you know, coaching is more than just being here, and it's a dream of his, but he knows he's in a position to, to inspire and help the players he leads, the community he leads, uh, and his family. And he also said when he got hired, he said, this is a long-term bill for me. This is my home. I'm not looking to make this a short-term stop. Derek San Hilaire for three. McNeese with the lead after the Miles Lewis bucket on the other end. And here come the Cowboys again, up one. No look English, but Shoemake catching it underneath the hoop. Still finishes. What a spin for the freshman's first points. Well, you talked about a, a team persevering, David. And they say, you know, a team reflects their coach. And John Aiken is getting his team fired up. I mean, they're playing inspired basketball against a very good and talented UNO team. Carson drives. Throws it into the hands of Lewis, but Bell saves. Nine to shoot. Sin Hilaire for the tie. English wrestle the ball away from Carson, but a tie up called first. UNO will have possession. David, this has really been a, a game of, you know, contested plays and shots. Nothing's coming easy for either team. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to put your big, your man uh, shoes on in this game to, if you're going to get something done. It's just it's your big boy shoes, as they say. Uh, I mean, because you're going to have to be tough to get the, to get a finish here. San Hilaire fires for three again. Yeah, this Cowboys team really reflects its coach. I mean, even this year, hard travel in the non-conference schedule. Their uh, new arena, the Legacy Center, open late. It had to be rebuilt because of the damage due to those hurricanes, yet here they are. On track, perhaps, to upset UNO and head to the semis. They're up five after the Trey English jumper. Now they're feeling it, and John Aiken is just going up and down the sideline, getting his team, getting the band. He's leading his uh, rebounding, you know, for some time, but they're getting out rebound in this game uh, by McNeese, and McNeese has pounded 11 offensive rebounds. They've kept many possessions alive. Kellen Taylor, four. And it's been a while since UNO has gotten to the free throw line. They're first in the nation in free throw rate coming in, but they've been on 14 of 17 for quite a long time. Eight to shoot for Troy Green. Steps in, fires, yes. You know, David, I said this 
earlier, and I'll say it again, he just has a knack for making something out of conceivably nothing. He steps through, finds openings. He really is a, 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 the heart and soul of this team when things aren't going their way. 15 for Green. It's a bump on Kirkland. He just picked up his third, but Derek St. Hilaire, 21 points a game, 13th in the nation coming in. UNO star guard, just six points on three of 11 shooting. I mean, you have to think he has to get going at some oh, time. Well, he's going to get it going. I, I just, you know, you never count out a great player. And as you mentioned, he's had so many second half comebacks. But, you know, McNeese doing a good job on Troy Green. He's been struggling this half. He's only got uh, a basket this half. So and he hurt here at McNeese in the first half. Scott drives, got fouled. Well, I like the aggressiveness of Zach Scott. He, you know, he's not just going to settle for jump shots. He's going to take the ball to the basket, not afraid of, of drawing contact. Uh, you know, I think UNO was there, but probably not quite there all the way. Second foul on Troy Green. And correction, Simeon Kirkland picked up his fourth foul. So he and Kamani Dowdy with four for the Privateers. Still over 13 minutes to go. Scott, 91% from the line. And John Aiken says Kellen Taylor may be the heart and soul of the team. But in the backcourt, Zach Scott's the heart and soul there. Due to his three-point shooting, 45% in conference play. And mentioned 17 and a half points and the Cowboys wins this season on average. He's now up to 15, still early second half. And, you know, I'd be inventing ways for him to get to the to the free throw line, 91%. That's getting it done, and he's just bottoms from there. Well, Mark Schlesinger said two things need to happen. we got to keep the opponent under 75. we got to make more free throws than the other team attempts. That's not happening right now. Zachy's pass tipped out of bounds by Trey English. Privateers lost three of four to end the regular season, giving up 84, 87, and 92. Myers cuts the deficit to three. Well, you know, you, you know, in a position, David, where they can get back and regain the lead, but they're going to have to do more of that. They're going to have to attack the rim, and they're going to have to get some stops. They're going to have to know where Scott is, maybe get it out of his hands. English, the pretty feed to Taylor. <laughs> Myers, two in a row. Now, problem's not on this end. The problem is right here. They, they have got to find ways, UNO, to slow down McNeese. Cowboys are six of nine from the floor this half. Colin Warren for three. And St. Hilaire get going here. Eight minutes into the second half. Keeps his dribble, then lost it off his foot. Resets to green. Saki drives, hangs, off the window, gets the roll. As the smallest player on UNO, for UNO out there, he's managed to get a little contact, kiss it off the glass, and keep UNO right in this game. That's Saki at 5'9", challenging the 7'1", yeah. Medley Bacon. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, they make him tough in Winnipeg. English for three. Yes! Now, how good has he been when he gets a, a spot? He's able to knock down a deep three. Myers lost the basketball. Warren drives. Shoemaker! Holy cow! Oh. oh boy, David, that's only gonna count for two, but I think it's gonna have bigger effect. Can someone show Dominique Wilkins that? The windmill! And another steal! English says Francois, your turn! You can see Coach Aiken just fired up. They have really played inspired basketball. You know, UNO showed their physicality early in this game. And, and I think McNeese stepped up and, you know, matched their intensity and their, and their physicalness. Cowboys are 64% this half. They're getting to the line, and UNO 
Yeah, they're relying more on the three this half, and as unsuccessful as they've been in the first, they're 0 of 9 from long range this game. No, it's, you know, they're, they're not going to get their shooting a ton of threes. They got to go back to what they do. They can get some mid range shots. Push. And Taylor says, I know I got him, but that's just his second foul. But that's smart basketball, David. That's, you come out of a timeout, you're in a rut. You don't depend on just hitting a shot. It's nice if you can get an open look and knock it down, but percentages haven't been there. So you go inside, draw foul. Inbounds Kirkland. The feed from Green, and rather that's Tyson Jackson, his second field goal. Well, that's two in a row. They take out Kellen Taylor. Now all of a sudden, there's a little bit of freedom inside. It's look for UNO to try to reestablish its dominance inside. Cowboys have scored on eight of their last 10 possessions. Colin Warren from the corner. Francois skies for the board, then lost it. Brent Dugas says still Cowboy possession. Well, you see UNO picking up the intensity. I, I, they've been playing, that's two good possessions on offense to get a score, and they're playing aggressive defensively, but they've got to come up with the rebounds. That's offensive rebound number 12, or 13, for the Cowboys. Gives them another 20. They push the midway point of the second half. Francois, pretty feed, another dunk. Medley Bacon with authority. Oh, to be 7-1, David, and roll to the basket and dominate with your size. Great presence. Warren call for the reach in. I really like Medley Bacon on that last play. He rolled, he got there hurry. Great hands, great feed. But you sense something, you know, Dave, you said we talked about earlier, McNeese is playing with a little bit of an edge, and you know, they, you gotta play that way. This is tournament time. How will the privateers respond? Oh, up and under, Saki. Now that's one way. Again, they, they find ways to get to the rim. They don't make it look easy, but they find a way to finish. But they're going to have to get a few more. Only a two-possession game. Keep that in mind. A lot of basketball left. English drives. What a beautiful drive that started from midcourt. Got all the way to the rim. Shouldn't do that. Saki again. Well, it's San Hilaire still going slow. It's the junior from Winnipeg, Daniel Saki. Three buckets in the last three minutes. David, you asked this question last time, and it still hasn't. And nobody's answered. How does Daniel Saki get Saki get to the line in, by scoring over a seven foot one player, giving away a foot and a half? That's some guts. How many times in conference tournaments have you had to see performances maybe like the one that Saki's given the last couple of minutes? Just something unexpected to help the big guns. Saki's and, up to 10. And they need every one of his baskets and his toughness because their big guns haven't been doing it for him uh, to this point. So Saki's been really big for them. Massey call for the charge. And who else? Pushes, and that's Saki he pushed <laughs> down. And who else, Dave? You asked for an unsung hero. If New Orleans can come back and, 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 and battle back here, Saki will have had a lot to do with this because he's really brought this team back from almost double digits. Transfer from Valparaiso. He was fifth in the Missouri Valley in assists, eighth in steals last season, but he's more of a distributor. His offense has kept the privateers around, down five and with the ball. Troy Green drives, challenges Medley Bacon this time short. Little contact, but I think the officials thought that he initiated it. Scott drives, connects. They keep getting it inside. And well, they keep getting it in Zach Scott's hands. That's pretty good uh, return on your dollar. St. Hilaire, yes! And with 8.24 to go in the game, that's the first three-pointer for UNO. David, I, if I know one thing, I know this. You don't keep a good man down for long. And I, I mentioned that he'd be back at some point in this game. I don't know how many more baskets he'll hit, but, you know, he's not going away softly. He's too much of a competitor. Yeah, for all the momentum that the Cowboys have had, I think you just said it, UNO's just hanging around. They're still down just four with eight to go. Eight on the shot clock and an errant pass. 
Turnover for McNeese. The Salzman Cowboys had to beat Northwestern State last night. They went four overtimes against HBU Saturday. Doesn't look like fatigue's a factor, however. Now, not yet, David, but uh, Derek St. Hilaire is going to have to do more of what he just did. Oh, what a great look. Finds Bell for the flush. Wow. And you know that's doing something, too. He's attracting attention. He's got the only three for the privateers, but boy, that last assist was huge. Kellen Taylor in traffic. Medley Bacon had it poked out of bounds, and so McNeese a fresh 20. Yeah, you know, Derek St. Hilaire hit only one three and the only one for the New Orleans uh, privateers, but that last drive, just showing you how important he is, He's strong, he's aggressive to the basket, he gets his teammates an easy, easy flush. 7.27 to go. Scott to the rim. Medley Bacon to the line. Well, you can see it's not easy to get to the rim on New Orleans. They're pretty big at the rim, but I love that McNeese is aggressive. They're not shying away from contact, and they're trying to get to the free throw line. Medley Bacon, 4.6 boards, 71% from the line. He suffers from asthma. He only flared up once he started playing basketball. He's had a long ride to Lake Charles. Fractured his tibia and fibula his junior year of high school, which hurt his ability to attract college offers. He was able to get his start at Coppin State, then one year at VCU where he didn't play much, and, now here in Lake Charles and says he wants to be a physical therapist, which has been an interest of his longer than playing basketball. Well, you, you admire his journey and his trek because it hasn't been easy, but here he is helping his team try to advance to the NCAA tournament with a chance. Keep their hopes alive. Green fires, yes. 17 for Green, along with six boards. Quiet no more. He's been very quiet this half, but both he and St. Hilaire are now getting into the mix. They're starting to make plays for their team. Taylor backs in on Green. Still, Taylor finishes. That's a good, persistent move. He got cut off both times and found a way still to get to his strong shoulder and score it. Saki. Inside to Myers, beautiful feed, and Myers cuts the deficit to two. How's that for setting the table for your teammate, David? Going up to the basket and dropping off a bounce pass for a layup at the rim. You don't see that very often, just bounced it. Easy play. You can see the urgency on UNO now. Just down two, over six to go. Oh, Aaron Feed. Taylor saw Lewis on the wing, but Lewis cut before the pass and a turnover. Well, it's an Aaron Feed, but it's excellent defense by by New Orleans. I thought they did a great job of double teaming Taylor and then getting back out in the logical passing angle. That was really good defense. You, What you want to do is when you put two on the ball, you get the next two guys in the passing lane and you keep one guy at the basket and that's what they did. Excellent well, team defense. For all Mark Schlesinger squad has been through this half, electrifying dunks, hot shooting, a chance to take the lead with a three with six to go and a foul. 15 foul on the Cowboys. Miles Lewis picks this one up. And this is what UNO does, David. They get to the foul line, they get you in the bonus, and if they can find a way to get St. Hilaire, Troy Green, some of these, their players to the line down the stretch of this game, they can, they can pull this game out. That's what their formula for success has been. St. Hilaire, 11 points, but I'm four of 12 shooting. Tend to shoot. Bell drives on Shoemate. Shoemate is just fortunate that he bounced off the back of Bell. It's not on the shot, so a fresh 20 coming. Well, interesting, that was another zone and one. Whether it's a box and one, uh, you know, it's a diamond and one. They were playing basically in the zone. Bell's not a good free throw shooter. <laughs> Probably good for Mark Schlesinger's squad. He didn't go up on that foul and get to the line. Instead, again, a fresh 20. Meyer spins. Saki's gonna come away with it. Then a foul, and now it's free throws. Shoemate and Taylor both dove for the basketball, and Taylor will pick up his third. 
Well, they were so close again to coming away with that ball. David, if, if, if you didn't think basketball was a game of inches, think it again. It, it really is. It's just there's such a fine line. Not only do Troy Green and Derek St. Hilaire get to the line, as well as anyone in the nation, they are both excellent from the stripe, and obviously that can be a factor with this just a two-point game, five and a half to go. They're both 83% from the line this season. Although Saki up the line, 66%. Just 59% in conference play, but doesn't score a whole lot. But in this half, he, his run midway through the half offensively kept UNO around, and now a chance to tie. Well, David, nobody said this was going to be easy. Both teams in a real, real serious dogfight. Pass tipped out of bounds by Bill. Now you can see the intensity and how bad these players want it. There's just a lot of aggression on the floor. These players are in their stance. They're sitting down. They're active with their hands, their feet. Nothing easy. Ten on the shot clock. English with the basketball. Myers covers. English for three. Almost got it off the window. Taylor the rebound. And a tie up before the shot. Possession error points the Cowboys way. Like the call, that was a great move just to tie it up. But again, another offensive rebound of sorts. And it's been really Kellen Taylor that's had his hands on four or five or six of them. 17 offensive rebounds for McNeese. Just nine second chance points, however. And Taylor's got five, I believe. Under five to go. Scott needs help. Finds Francois. Inside, Shoemate. Three on the shot clock, and he got it poked away. Green comes away with it. Myers ties it up. Uh, John Myers, eight in the half, ten in the game, and we're tied at 70. Oh, how about this, the calmness of Daniel Sakai, Sakai just to get the ball to his teammate Myers for the sure shot. That's just great boys. English bumped. Both teams in the bonus. Free throws coming up. You know, David, it's, it's just really, it's a bonus, it's a luxury when you have guys that can play with the ball in their hands on a string and just find their teammates. Make it easy. Set the table for your teammates. What a story Trey English is. He had under 100 points for the season until he went for 27 in the four overtime loss to HBU Saturday. But he's followed it up 12 last night. And today, the freshman with 14, including five of eight from the line. Here he is in crunch time. His team season on the line. Misses the front end and a foul. Well, unfortunate miss because Trey English has been superb. Uh, again, now we talked about this, and I'm not going to use it as an excuse, but, you know, could fatigue be settling in? And, and you know, how do you judge fatigue? Decision-making, turnovers, missed free throws. Uh, you know, fatigue can take its toll on you, so you don't really know. But keep your eyes on it because if any team is going to be a little tired, it's going to be the Cowboys. Deontay Bell, 0 of 2 from the line today, and just 44% coming in. But a chance to give his team its first lead since just under 17 minutes remained at 44 43. That looked good. No problem, David. Don't forget <laughs> about the percentages. It's, it's game time. I love the ability of players. You know, statistics don't call out that you need to be a good free throw shooter, but the ability just to get up and hit that first one is important. Now, he missed the second, but just the fact that he was able to do that, that's a, that's a confidence builder. Hopefully, he gets there again. Whistle away from the ball and a foul. 
Bell will send Brendan Medley Bacon to the line when we return. A chance for the Cowboys to take the lead. Exactly four minutes to go. Down the stretch we go. Four minutes left. Spot in the Southland semifinals tomorrow on the line. With Ben Braun, I'm David Salzman. UNO, McNeese, 71-70. And the 7-1 center, Brendan Medley Bacon at the line for a one and one to try to give the Pokes the lead. Still a one point UNO lead. Derek St. Hilaire just four of 12 from the floor. Will we see heroics from him and Troy Green late, best backcourt in the league. Double on St. Hilaire and a foul. Wow, that was close to a traveling call. St. Hilaire lost control of the ball against some active hands. Fortunate for the foul call, but you know, what does he do, Davey? He does what he does best. He gets to the foul line. And I'll repeat, him and Troy Green, 83% from the line. They get to the foul line just as much as anyone in the conference, really the nation. And it's St. Hilaire for a one and one. It's the ninth McNeese team foul. Mark Schlesinger says Derek St. Hilaire invests as many hours into the game as anyone he's coached it's for moments just like these. And David, that says a lot because these players, and I've coached a number of players like that, that, that live in the gym. The game's over, they're in the gym, they're there early in the morning. You can't count the hours. A lot of the average fan just doesn't know how much time these players put, put in to, to master their craft. Mark Schlesinger says he, Troy Green too, they got some overtures about leaving UNO, playing their last year somewhere else. They never entered the transfer portal, but it was enough for Coach Les to say, made me a little uncomfortable. But both leaders decided to come back just for the opportunity to make the NCAA tournament. Of course, they must win here in the next two nights to fulfill their dream. Well, they're, they're capable, there's no question. They've, done, they've come back, they've, they were down. I like the way that they've shown guts to come back to this game. McNeese really was playing at a high level, opening up a pretty significant lead. Miles Lewis bumped. Chance at the line to end this privateer 7-0 run, which has given them a three-point edge. Well, again, we talked about the advantages. If it's a close game and it's down the stretch, you give the edge to UNO because, A, they've won more games, B, the free throw shooting. Uh, take your pick. Those are, those are two big... Big reasons why you know you got to give that edge and the experience factor, and also they 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 should be the fresher of the two teams. Lewis just 54% from the line coming in, 0 for three tonight. Miss free throws, dooming the Cowboys late. They're under 60% for the game now. Uh, here's the box in, in kind of a zone look. They're, now they're going to go back and they're switching everything. Green. To the line, he'll go. That's amazing, David, how coaches, good coaches, get the ball in their best player's hands, especially at crunch time. That's not a, that's, that's not, this is not equal opportunity at this point in the game. You know, you're just not going to throw it inside and let your big guys create. No matter how much size advantage you have, you, you've got to control the game through your guards, and that's what they're doing. Troy Green was on the privateer squad that made it to the 2019 championship game here. Fifth year senior from St. Rose, Louisiana, approaching 1,800 points in his career. Just under 400 assists as well. This is his 148th game at UNO, and I'm sure he would tell us this is his biggest. Puts his team up five, a 9 0 run now. Not incredible. You can't replace that type of experience having been there. Where must not get his hand, so they, they've got to be ready for that. They put Troy Green on, Zach Scott. Cowboys haven't scored since the 6.45 mark. Now they switch St. Hilaire on him. Under three to go. Taylor. Now they reset, 10 to shoot. English for three. Metley Bacon with the basketball. That's a tie-up. UNO ball, Troy Green forces the tie-up of the McNeese big man. Well, David, I'm going to say this. That was a great possession for New Orleans defensively. However, with the exception of not coming up with the rebound, they're very fortunate to have this ball in their hands thanks to the jump ball. But my goodness, that was a great possession. But you got to close the deal.
Myers inside. Jackson gets the roll and the foul. Well, forgive me for doubting the big guys, David. I, I talked about the guards deciding the outcome of this game, but who makes maybe the biggest basket, you know, certainly for him this game, huge play, the contact, the chance for the three-point play, his teammates having the presence of mind to going inside where there was clearly a mismatch, and they were getting double teamed. They had to get rid of the ball. Great play. Tyson Jackson quiet today, made the old freshman team in Conference USA at Middle Tennessee two seasons ago, and here he is, biggest game of his college career. Brent Dukov blows the whistle. He's called a lane violation on UNO. Well, they missed a shot anyways, yep. but that's not what you want. <laughs> you know, maybe their teammates were trying to anticipate an offensive rebound, but you know, you don't want to make that kind of mistake, but they, they missed the free throw. But now, now what's going to happen, it's going to be an opportunity, David, for McNeese. They've got to decide, as you mentioned, who's going to make the play to keep them in this game. They're doing a pretty good job on Zach Scott. Warren got lost in the air, a turnover. Two minutes remain. David, those two defensive possessions by New Orleans were the best two possessions of the game, and they couldn't have come at a better time for UNO. What great stops when they needed it. The privateers have held the Cowboys scoreless for five minutes. It's an 11-0 run. It's been such an uphill climb for the team from New Orleans. But this experience has come through from Mark Schlesinger's squad so far when they've needed it most. And who said defense doesn't win? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's made a difference. He said that McNeese needed to be under 75. I didn't think there was a prayer of that no, earlier on. No, and they may end up doing it. Five to shoot, St. Hilaire. Chance for the Cowboys here. Oh, and a foul. Stops the clock and sends Zach Scott, a 91% free throw shooter, to the line for two. Yeah, David, that's very uncharacteristic of Derek St. Hilaire and a veteran leader. You're 94 feet from the basket. You know, you miss your shot. Okay, now make some time go off the clock. So it's down close to a minute left to play, but you stop the clock and put the other team's best free throw shooter at the line. After missing the front end of three straight one and ones, Scott has two here for McNeese. Doing what his teammates have been unable to do. He'll have one more. Don't be surprised to, to see McNeese go for a steal in the first 10, 15 seconds and then come up and play the foul game. Still a two possession game. You don't have to foul, but you know, you don't want this game to get down to one minute to go either. So they're going to try to be aggressive. And we'll say again with St. Hilaire and Green and their propensity to hit free throws, huge defensive possession coming up here for McNeese. Green finds Jackson, swat Taylor. Still UNO ball. Well, I was going to say, you know, if you're going to get a sure two, take it. I don't know if that was a sure two. I'm sure he thought it was a sure two. Here's what should have been a dunk, but no. From trying to set the charge to a second later, being able to get the block. And now you got to take a little bit of clock. St. Hilaire backs it on English. Spins, hangs, got it knocked loose by Taylor. Scott for three. Jackson gets to it first. And McNeese fouls. Wow. Two possession game, was that <laughs> yeah. necessary? Well, yeah, you know, David, I, I, I don't think you can let, you mean the foul? Correct. Yeah, I don't think you let it go down 30 seconds here. Okay. I, I just don't because 30 seconds to go and six points, it, that's putting pressure on you. I think you try to maybe take the first 10 seconds, try to get a steal or you selectively foul but you're now putting Troy Green to the line. Don't have the luxury always to decide who you want to foul, but now that foul is looking better and better. <laughs> well, it's his first miss from the line today, seven of eight. But you, you know, you're running out of time. A minute to play, you can't let a team take 30 seconds okay. off the clock. I just don't believe you can do that with a six point lead. So 
uh, you know, if they can come away with just one here, that, that's a pretty good exchange. Still a two possession game. 20 for Green to lead all scores. Uh, if you're New Orleans, you shouldn't foul. English to the rim. I mean, I don't. I just don't believe they're going to let it come in. Okay. On the baseline after a make. That's a quick foul on Green. Just about a second, a little more than a second went off the yeah, clock. Yeah, and they try to get it, you know, a turnover. Maybe a five count, a turnover. That's fine. But I also thought New Orleans did a good job. They misdirected and they came back to Troy Green, who was just at the line. And, you know, he's got experience being there. 57.2 seconds remaining. Great second semifinal here. Women's second round tomorrow. UAW, last second three at the buzzer to defeat Nichols earlier today. They'll take on the Cowgirls of McNeese, Noon Eastern, 11 Central here in Katy. Well, that's a big free throw, and this will be big as well, a 6.2 possession game. In and out. Do you need a three here? I think you better get the first shot, available shot. Wow, a foul. Yeah, you, you know, you go down that deep on the clock. Um, but, you know, you're, you're not going to give up. The, the good news about a foul is you're not going to give up a three, but you stop the clock, and again, you allow McNeese to set their defense, assuming they make their free throws. I think if you're if he makes them both, you obviously don't have no, the foul. No, you don't. You don't. At that point, you're going to get the possession arrow. It's going to come back. And so, again, do I sit back and play passively? No, I'm going to try to pressure. They're in a press, and they don't have to foul if he makes this. If they do, they will probably foul. It's a three-point game. English with 18. You know, New Orleans is going to have to make some free throws. I, I still think you're going to end up seeing some pressure. Uh, but... McNeese backs off. I mean, they know they get one stop. They can tie it with a three. They're going to double. St. Hilaire tripped up. Well, both teams ill-advised fouls in the final minute of this game. Yeah, you don't have to foul there, David. It's, you know, and if you're going to foul, you certainly want to foul earlier, not let some time go off the clock. But, but you don't have to foul. A stop, you got a chance to come back. But, you know, a lot of coaches don't like to say that because they say if you, if they score, then then you're really in a in a in a bind. You're now two possession game again. But big free throws for Saint Hilaire. He's five of five from the line. A struggle from the floor, but. He's contributed in other ways, not just from the line, four rebounds as well. If you're McNeese, you absolutely don't have to get a three here. You can race it down the floor, and you can get a two or draw a foul and stop the clock. But you do not have to hoist a three-point shot. Five-point lead, you're going to need a three and a two anyway. So take the two challenge New Orleans to, to say, hey, they're not going to foul us, so take it as far as you can and get an easy one if you can. How fast did the Cowboys go? Foul on St. Hilaire. That, this is incredible. Uh, another opportunity for the Cowboys to get points with a clock stop. Second time St. Well, Hilaire's done this David, in the last two minutes. You know, I used to believe later in my career that you put a team in the zone at the end for two reasons. One is you make a team pass it a few times, take up time, and two is your, your players aren't going to be up the floor as fouling. But Ben, there's 35.2 left, so same situation as before. If he hits them both, they're in a situation you didn't think they'd be in before. Maybe they don't have to foul, just get the one stop and, no, and tie with I, the three. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just, you know, you have to trust your team, but at times maybe you don't trust your team. They get excited, they lose track of the so time and score. Uh, and it's about discipline. If you're in your zone, you're already in position. You're probably not going to foul. Big miss. It's a two-possession game. You think McNeese has to foul now? Yes. St. Hilaire across the midcourt strike. Why no foul? No call time. St. Hilaire the inbounds. There's the foul. Clock stop, 19.6 to go. Well, there's still time, and, and, and really, there's an eternity. 
but you're going to hope that St. Hilaire misses one. Chances of missing both are, are pretty extreme, but you know, if you can miss one, you can come down and you can get a score, call a timeout, or get a three if it's available. I hope Mark Schlesinger will call a timeout and remind his team not to foul because they've done so. They have fouled the last two possessions unnecessarily, and it, it was uncharacteristically the senior St. Hilaire, but he, he's, I think Mark Schlesinger is telling his team, do not, I repeat, do not foul. You cannot stop the clock. I think this should be a substitution. I like to sub on free throws because it stops the clock and allows a player to get in and you can coach your guys a little bit in between a free throw. To put UNO up six. Off the mark. Under 20 seconds left. English. Quick three, Francois. Way off. Scott knocks it off. Back out here. Now it's going to take some time to reload and get a shot. Got to hurry. Scott for three, off the mark. Dowdy swats it away from English. And that, two points no, six and, left. And that should do it. Uh, you're UNO right now. <laughs> you did, I see their players saying, "Do not touch anybody." <laughs> you know, you can't get a three-point play. You can't stop the clock with a foul. Nothing can hurt you now other than the clock. Well, they say survive in advance. That's exactly what UNO has done. Oh, another foul. <laughs> Dowdy fouls out, Shumi to the line. Yeah, I, I mean, there's point nine, so they should be okay. But David, it, it doesn't make sense. You allow that shot to go because if you make two free throws, okay, now it's a one possession game. Uh, and what if they don't get the ball in? And Tyson Jackson is hurt behind the McNeese hoop. And uh, he, he's trying to let our officiating crew know. Hmm. He's got it in a pretty bad spot. Yeah, he needs and a little time. But David, I want to go back to this point. If if Shoemate makes both free throws, now it's on UNO to get the ball in bounds. What if they get a five a five count? What if they get a violation? What if they get an offensive foul? It still gives McNeese a chance to win, which they had no chance to win if you don't foul and stop the clock. So it's really just you know. The, New Orleans may get lucky and you know end up getting this game not lucky but they may get fortunate that they can survive this but that's three fouls down the stretch of this game that they have to correct if they have any intention of moving forward there will be disappointment for McNeese when this is over though who knows when they lost in four overtime Saturday when John Aiken went back to the locker room everyone applauded each other maybe they do the same thing here this has been a big week for this McNeese program 